never done before. Barnsdale is famous for the 4 and 20 pie, so I think it's only fitting that I cook the guys some pies for today's footy match. I'm going to cook up a feast for the last match of the season. But first, I'm off to the tiny settlement of Wok Wok to source the best beef I can find. And that's where third generation beef farmer Peter Treasure and his dad Ken come in. They breed Australian Murray Greys. I love Murray Grey beef. You know, for many, many years in the Moran family farm, we had Murray Greys. I just love the different colours of them. But these Murray Greys are special. They're only fed grass, not grain, which means they're rich in omega-3s. And their meat is dry-aged here on the farm, giving the beef a more concentrated flavour, just perfect for my pies. Murray Greys, see, they're, they're dark brown, a little bit of tan. You know, not one is the same, and that's a big bull sitting right in front of us. The bulls look pretty scary, but beautiful-looking cattle. G'day, Matt. How are you? Ben, how are you? Ken, how are you? Well, thank you. So how long have you guys been here, then? I've been here all my life. Have you? Yes, I was born here on the place uh, 78 years ago. Right. Uh, father tells me that the uh, days when grandmother first came in here, she had a team of boys that used to milk by hand, and they used to milk up to 100 cows wow. a, a day by hand. That is hard work. Yeah. And Murray Greys? Murray Greys work really well on this country. Yeah. Uh, they're just, um, they're more suited. I saw the big bull coming in and yeah. he looks pretty spectacular. Yeah, there's a few good bulls there yeah. and we're pretty proud of them. They've yeah. come from the original area from the Murray Greys. So How about we go and have a look at them? Sounds good. Yeah. Welcome to okay. Matt. Yes. Ken and Peter's passion for producing quality beef is inspiring but their obsession with raising stock on grass only does have its downside. It's a lot more work than using grain. I've got to ask the question, you never thought of grain? <laughs> no, no way. Um, look, we don't need grain, to be honest. No. And, and an animal really finishes far better on grass and you get all the flavours through. Grain is only for a more commercial sense. It's far better to give that natural finish to an animal. Market people really want grass-fed cattle. But grass feeding is only one part of the secret to their success. The other is to personally manage every part of the process, from breeding to market. Where do they go from here? What we're doing is we're then um, sending them off to be processed. They're coming back to the farm, and that's where we control them again. We're hanging it uh, and dry-aging it in our own cool room under our conditions, yep. not under a butcher's conditions. Yep. Then from there, we're optimising every part of that beast and we're yep. controlling where that Nose market goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. To me, that is true paddock to plate. You're breeding it, you're growing them, you're feeding them, they're going off just to get slaughtered, coming back, you're ageing them and then giving them to the consumer. That's, yep. that's fantastic. The fact that we're seeing our product all the way through from the time they're born the time that they're eaten virtually it gives Ken, us a bit of pride in our product. Ken, that is exactly why I'm here. I want some good meat to make these pies this afternoon. Yeah. I'm sick of looking at live ones. Show me some beef. All right, then. let's, let's go. go have a look. Peter and Ken's main customers are boutique butchers uh, and restaurants. Yeah, Dry-aged beef can be hard to find because of the time it takes to get to market. But let me tell you, taste-wise, it's worth the wait. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what, there's, <laughs> a, there's some meat ageing in here. Certainly is, mate. There's a fair bit going through here. How long is it in here for? Uh, it'll be in here for anywhere between 30 and 60 days. Wow. And the lighting in here, I see you've got blue lighting. Yes, we have the blue lighting there is, a, is a, an extra to the Himalayan rock salt. Right. That then, the, the ozone's in that get into the, the um, bones and that uh, makes sure the bacteria doesn't grow inside right. them. And the, the rock salt, there's a bit of rock salt there. Yeah, a little bit of rock salt. Basically what it's doing is drawing all the impurities out of the yeah. air that's here in this cool room at the moment. Um, it will continue to be a natural preservative with the meat. Yeah, right. This might all sound very scientific, but basically dry ageing allows enzymes to ripen and ferment the meat, adding a delicious complexity of flavour. 
Fantastic idea. Yeah. I might use that one myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. No, it's all right, mate. I'm learning. It's a learning process for me at the same time. Are we here to share? Yeah, good man, good man. I share your recipe every now and then. Hey, that's a good idea, <laughs> I need some secondary cut for my pie. That's yep, a, sure. That's a four-quarter, which to me, I reckon, is uh, the best braising meat. Absolutely beautiful. Knife? Okay. Knife, grab a knife there and uh, go for it. Well, it looks like good meat. You can smell that age. I love my, my beef. I just really love all of these cuts. I don't want to waste any, so... No. Oh, yeah. well, that's a, that's yeah. a few kilos there. Yeah, look, that's going to be great. You know, this piece of meat, to me, is perfect for braising. It's got a little bit of fat through it. It's got some sinew that will braise down really well after yes. a few yep. hours. Yep. That, to me, is the perfect cut to make pies. Wonderful.